What's going on guys? Welcome back to Trafish Aquatics. Today we're going to be talking about the pH in your aquarium. Okay, so the pH in your aquarium. The reason I want to talk about this is this is a confusing topic for a lot of new hobbyists and people who are new to the aquarium hobby. And I want to try and go over it in a way that it's going to be very easy to understand and is going to make it a lot easier for you to take care of your fish and make your fish happy. So the first thing I want to talk about is the pH scale itself. Um, the pH scale goes from 0 to 14, 0 being the most acidic water can be, and 14 being the most alkaline or base the water can be, and 7 being the neutral point. Um, with just nice clean water, right? So where people get confused with this, I believe, is there is a belief that your fish has an ideal pH parameter. So what I mean by that is when you go to a fish store, right, and you see the fish inside of a tank, below that tank there's usually an ID card, and like I'm gonna use goldfish as an example, and it says goldfish, recommended tank size, 75 gallons, right? And then it's going to say pH recommended 7.0. Now, a new aquarist is going to see that and go, oh, my tap water when I was cycling my tank was 6.0 or it was 8.0. I need to get it to 7. So what they're going to do is they're going to go down to the chemical aisle and they're going to grab pH up and pH down chemicals and they're going to go home and they're going to start adding up or down and trying to get that pH to the ideal spot so their fish is the happiest they can be. Now that's all well and good but it's actually more stressful on your fish to be chasing numbers up and down rather than just leaving it at a stable pH. Even if it's not the ideal parameter it's better for your fish to be in a stable pH rather than a fluctuating and changing pH constantly because that's going to add a lot more stress to your fish. Now what do I mean by that? So for goldfish, right, we'll just say that the ideal pH is 7, right, and your tap water is coming out at 6. Now 6 is not necessarily a super acidic pH and you can keep goldfish in that. Right? And that goes for most fish as well. Six is not that far off from seven on the pH scale. right? And it's not going to be that detrimental if you have a 6.0 pH to keep your fish in that. They're going to adapt to it, they're going to become acclimated to it, and they're going to live in that. And it's not going to be a big deal. Same thing goes if you have 8.0 pH, you know, and the ideal is seven. It's the same situation. They're going to acclimate and be fine. Um, now, if you have fish that are in the extreme ends of that spectrum, so as an example, uh, for very acidic water, usually around 5.0, you can keep uh, German Blue Rams. Now, German Blue Rams, you can go anywhere between 5 and 7, but I'm just going to say that they ideally like 5, right? So, you're not going to want to keep them in water that has a pH of 9.0 because that's four points away. That is a very a much larger difference in pH than if you were to have a goldfish in six with a requirement of seven, right? So that's very close, but it's still a two point range from six to eight. You can keep your goldfish, right? So there is a larger area there that you can keep those fish in. But if you're in a extreme, right, the five to nine, you're going to want to try and either adjust your pH down to get it as close to the 5 as you can for the German Blue Rams, or on the opposite end of the spectrum, in a pH of 8 to 9, you can keep uh, Lake Malawi cichlids, right? They prefer a much higher pH, and if your water's coming out at 6.0, um, you're going to want to increase your pH to get it as close as you can to that so that they're more happy. Now, I understand that that's a little bit confusing. Right? But the general consensus on that is keeping a stable pH is better. Right? So if you are looking at a community fish that the ideal parameter is anywhere between 6 and 8, and your water is anywhere between 6 and 8, right? don't chase it. 
just let them go, leave your water alone, don't change anything, and they will become accustomed to it, right? Because you're going to cause more stress with chasing pH than you would with just leaving it alone. Now, if you're in a situation where you want to change pH or you have to change pH because your pH is too high and you want to keep German Blue Rams and they need a very low pH, or if you want to keep Lake Malawi cichlids and you have a very low pH and you need to raise it up, there are ways to do that without buying um, pH up and pH down and other chemicals to adjust your pH. You can do it a little bit more naturally. So I'm going to talk about some ways that we can do that in the aquarium and it's very easy. Most of them are slow transitions so they're not going to be detrimental to the fish at all. Um, and overall a couple of them are going to make your tank look better in my opinion anyway. Um, so I want to talk first about how to lower the pH in your aquarium. So bringing your pH down right to make it more acidic you can do two things that I'm going to talk about in this video and the first one is going to be adding real driftwood. So real driftwood when you add it to an aquarium is going to leach what are known as tannins right so what is a tannin? A tannin is tannic acid that leaches out of wood into an aquarium and is a brownish yellow color, right? So as an example, back here I have a five and a half gallon tank. Let me see if I can turn the camera here. So this tank right here is full of tannins. So I've got natural driftwood in there. They're leaching that tannic acid, which is lowering the pH, but it's also turning the water a brownish yellow color. Now, that's not detrimental to the fish at all. It's actually beneficial for them, um, but it does make the water a little dark, as opposed to all of the other water that I have around it, which is very, very clear. Now, the tannic acid is going to lower your pH. It can bring it down to the 5-6 range, um, and that works very well. Now, if you're adding driftwood and it's not leaching enough tannins to bring the pH down as low as you want it. You can also add Indian almond leaves, which are dried almond leaves. Uh, you can buy them on Amazon. A lot of fish stores carry them. And they come in different sizes. You can get big leaves and small leaves. And you basically do the same thing. You add those to your aquarium and they're going to leach tannins and tannic acid and it's going to lower your pH. And both of those options work very, very well for lowering your pH to get it down in the realm where fish that need acidic water are happy. Um, on the opposite end of that spectrum, right, you need to raise pH. And two of my favorite ways to raise pH, um, the first one is going to be crushed coral. Now, crushed coral, you can buy it at your local pet store. It's going to be in the substrates usually. And you can either add it to a canister filter in one of the baskets, or you can add it to a hang-on back in a little mesh bag. And what it's going to do is if you have acidic water, the crushed coral is going to dissolve, right? Crushed coral is essentially calcium carbonate and it is going to break down and it is going to dissolve into the aquarium and it is going to do two things. It is going to raise your pH. Um, crushed coral dissolves and saturates out at around 8.2 is the maximum. Generally with us doing water changes and things like that, we're going to see it more in the realm of 7.6 to 7.8. But if you let it go for a long time, you can get it to about 8.2. Um, that's the natural dilution for uh, the crushed coral in water. And um, yeah, so it'll just dissolve into the water. It's going to raise your pH and it is going to raise your KH or your carbonate hardness. So carbonate hardness, when you elevate that, is going to add a buffering capacity and it's going to allow the pH to not fluctuate up and down and it is going to keep that much more stable, right? So that is extremely beneficial if you don't want to have pH swings and you want to have your water very alkaline, especially if you want to have cichlids and driftwood, right? Because driftwood is going to lower pH, so you don't want to have that with cichlids, so you can add crushed coral and it's going to raise that, so you can still have a high pH that's not going to fluctuate with driftwood. So crushed coral is very, very good. I love it. It works amazing. Now, if you need to raise your pH in a pinch because, uh-oh, 
you added driftwood, you didn't know that that was going to drop your pH, and you need to get it back up because it's an emergency, right? You can use baking soda. Now, baking soda is sodium bicarbonate, and when you put that into an aquarium, you only want to dose one teaspoon per five gallons to swing your pH one point. So if you want to go from 6.0 to 7.0, it's one teaspoon per five gallons to bring it up. Now, I do not recommend dosing that much at one time because the shock of the pH swing could be detrimental to your fish and you don't want to do that. I recommend doing smaller doses over a longer period of time to elevate that. Um, but basically what's going to happen is you're going to put it in your aquarium, it's going to dissolve in a couple seconds, and it's going to bring your pH up. It's also going to raise up your KH. Now, because you already have driftwood and things in there, uh, leaching your tannic acids and things like that, and it's going to be bringing your pH down, the buffering capacity of the KH is also going to slowly be depleted and it will eventually run out and it will drop your pH again. So that's usually why I recommend crushed coral over baking soda because baking soda is a very short term fix and crushed coral is more of a long term fix. But both of them work just as well. Um, so those are the two methods that I really recommend for lowering and raising pH if you have to. but Generally, overall, it is much better to maintain a stable pH as long as it's within a relative distance to the ideal pH of your fish. Um, you don't have to change anything. So basically, you got a fish that wants 8.0 and your water's at 6.5. You could raise it a little bit, but chances are your fish is going to be fine in that, and it's better just to keep it stable. The fish will acclimate and everything will be okay. Um, so chasing pH, not necessarily a good thing, you know, unless you are on the extreme ends of that spectrum. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys for watching Traffish Aquatics, and I'll see you guys in the next video.